Well, good morning. Once again, I have some thoughts that have been going through my mind that I was thinking about today, and it all started with my Bible reading. Now, what I do for my Bible reading is I actually have a spot this um, this year in the New Testament and in the Old Testament that I'm reading from. And when I get done with my prayers in the morning, I'll ask God to show me where he wants me to read, New Testament or Old, or Old Testament. And I just started in Genesis and Matthew and I'm just kind of going through. And um, because I had learned that a long time ago that when I read with a read the Bible through, I just was so focused on trying to finish the Bible reading for the day that I wasn't actually just allowing God to speak to me. And it just became a big pressure that I just didn't want to have to deal with. So I began to just kind of read as God led me on a daily basis. And each year it's, it's something different. Sometimes it's the same thing for a couple of years. But this year that's how I'm doing it. And this morning I was... Um, I got done reading and uh, praying, and I asked the Lord where he wanted me to read, you know, the New Testament or the Old Testament. And usually he'll, he'll even tell me sometimes the, the, um, the book of the Bible to, to read in, like either right now I'm in Exodus or Acts, and sometimes it'll be, oh, I feel like I really need to read in Exodus, or I really need to read in Acts. Um, it just kind of works like that. And so I asked the Lord this morning, where does he want me to read? And instead he said, Psalms. I'm like, okay, I'll go read in Psalms. So I, you know, read through, I opened my Bible, and uh, when God kind of tells me to read in a certain spot, I'll just open the Bible, and um, he usually leads me right to the chapter or the verse that I need to, I need for whatever I'm going through. So I went to Psalms, and I just kind of opened to a spot, and the pages fell at Psalms uh, 77 and Psalm 78. So I read Psalm 77, which was really encouraging and really touched me with some of the things that I've been suffering with, especially over the last week or so, um, in terms of some of the health things that I've been going through. And uh, and then I read Psalm 78, because so I figured, well, I'm not just going to, I don't want to just read one chapter. So I read Psalm 78, and Psalm 78 kind of goes through the um, what Moses and the children of Israel are going through in the desert. And I found that very interesting because I've actually been reading that part uh, in the scriptures over the last couple of weeks because I'm actually in Exodus where Israel's going through the wilderness where they trust God to provide and then he does and then they come through another trial and they complain and then God comes through for them and then they, they are like, okay, God came through for us and then they get to another trial and it's like, oh no, he's not going to come through. We don't have any water. We don't have any food or whatever. And they're constantly complaining. God's constantly providing and, and it's just kind of, an endless cycle and uh, so it was very interesting that I was reading that chapter and I've been kind of already up on what was going on with Israel and basically the chapter 78 of Psalms goes through and talks about how God provided for Israel and he kept providing for them and for their fathers because he wanted to establish a testimony so that way they could tell their children how God provided and the reason that God wanted them to tell their children and the next generations how God provided is so that way Israel could set their hope in God and so they wouldn't forget about God and what he'd done and all of his commandments that he had given them. Um, but they continued to fall. Despite the many wonderful and marvelous things that God provided for them, they continued to uh, fall back in their sin of complaining and um, you know, slipping and sliding and, and not following what he wanted them to do. And it goes on to constantly say how, you know, God, he led them through um, a cloud with, um, in the daytime, he led them with a cloud, and at night, he led them with a light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink out of the great deep. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused rivers to run down like, uh, waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. They tempted God in asking in their heart, um, they tempted God in their heart by asking meat um, for their lust. So despite the fact, and it constantly goes through that in the verses in, in Psalm 78 of how God provided, and then they continue to um, ask God for more, and they continue to complain. And then a couple of verses after that, it says, you know, that he rained down manna from heaven, and they ate angels' food, and he sent them meat to the full. Um, he rained down flesh upon them. He let it fall in the midst of their camp. He didn't have them have to walk thousands, hundreds of miles away. He allowed and provided the provision for them right where they were. And despite all of that, they were estranged from him because of their lust and because of their complaining. And, of course, God grew angry and smote a bunch of the Israelites because of that. And when God finally smote them, uh, they remembered, once again, God. And they remembered that he was their rock and their redeemer. 
Um, so I, I don't know if you see a pattern here, but this is kind of how it goes in regular life with us and nowadays. I mean, or at least I know it's how it goes with me. God will provide something for me and give me a victory, and then all of a sudden I'm back into the same thing of complaining because, oh, you know, I, I don't know how I'm going to get through it this week. And, you know, where's the money going to come for the groceries? Where's the money going to come for the gas? And, Lord, are you going to provide? And then he provides. And then it's like, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I doubted you. I have to keep trusting that you're my redeemer. You're my salvation. You're my provider. Uh, you're my rock. And then I go through it all again. And then God brings me through another trial. And then I remember, oh, like, yeah, that's right. God keeps providing for me. And back and forth. And then it says in verse 36, that how right after it says that they remembered that God was their rock and their redeemer, it says, nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. So despite the fact that God was doing all of that, they were actually not even in their heart uh, clinging to those promises. They were saying them out loud, oh, you know, I believe God's going to provide, but they didn't really believe it in their heart. And I find that that's sometimes a difficulty for me too, because sometimes I, I'll keep saying it, because I just hope that by saying it, it's going to come to my heart. But if you don't fully believe God from your heart, how can he work for you? And then it says in verse 38, after it says that, you know, their heart wasn't right with him, it says that, but he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath, for he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes away and cometh again, not again. And I'm so grateful that God remembers that we're dust. There are so many times that I'll get upset and I'll stumble and fall, and he lifts me up and I'm just like, thank you, Lord, for not smiting me with a bolt of lightning. And thank you for remembering that I'm just dust. I, I can't do anything in my own strength because um, trying to stay faithful to God in your own strength isn't always going to work. Sometimes you just need to come to him and say, Lord, I want to believe, help my own belief, and help me to have trust and have that faith that I need to have to be right with you. Um, and then the the one verse that, that really spoke to me today um, is something that the Lord has showed me over and over again in the past as well. Verse 41, it says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. And one big thing that I have realized in my life and have been working on is I don't want to limit God being able to work in my life. You know, God can do so much for us. He can take us to so many places. Honestly, I don't want to get to heaven and have God say, I had all of this for you, but you didn't trust me. You didn't believe. You didn't have the faith. You, you know, didn't take that step that I wanted you to take and I was guiding you to do. Yes, we have a free will, but in my free will, my greatest desire is that I don't want to limit what God can do in my life. And ways that we limit him is by not believing that he can come and help us. The Bible says that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that means even when you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like talking with God, tell him, say, Lord, I'm having struggles today. I don't feel like talking with you today. I'm having struggles with all of this stuff going on in my life. But you've said that if I diligently seek you, you will reward me for that and that you will be there for me and that I can cast my care upon you and I don't have to bear these burdens. And then give it to him and just allow him to work in your life. Uh, so often we limit God with our lack of faith on what he can do for us. The Lord's been really showing me over the last week that if I trust him completely, he's going to guide me in ways I don't even know. Um, the other day I was feeling quite ill when I woke up and I was in so much pain. I was laying in bed and I was like, oh, the, I could see the clock ticking away, you know, getting, you know, later and later in the morning. And I'm like, oh, you know, I just don't feel like I can get up. I'm in so much pain here and my, and I just, I just don't know what to do. And all, and I was just talking with the Lord. I'm like, Lord, <clears throat> last week, this was my prayer almost every morning. I was like, Lord, I don't know what I can do here. I'm very weak. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling sore. Um, I need your, your strength to get through today. I need your strength just to get out of bed. Last week was one of those weeks where every single day, the only way I made it was through the strength of the Lord. And so I'm lay, I was laying there praying about this. My, my pain was kind of gradually increasing, and I was like, oh, I didn't want to take an ibuprofen because I, I'd rather my body be able to you know, overcome these things without the help of medication. And, and I was kind of in, But I, I, I would take it if I needed to. Um, but I was like, Lord, I didn't. I don't really want to take medication. I want to be able to do this by, you know, eating right and 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 doing using what you've given me. 
And all of a sudden, I felt like, okay, I need to put my back, my hand on my back. So I put my hand on my back, and I felt like, okay, I need to press this one spot in my lower back. So I started pushing it really hard. And I laid there for a few minutes, and I just kept feeling like I just need to keep my hand there and push it. And then later on in the day, I thought, you know, and as I was laying there for a couple minutes, about five minutes had passed, I was thinking, you know, I wonder if this is kind of like an acupuncture, acu acupressure type spot. Um, the main difference between acupuncture and acupressure is acupuncture uses the needles and acupressure uses like your hand, your finger or like a pencil or something like that to apply pressure to certain points in your body that can alleviate pain or, or help to, your body to function a little bit um, higher um, and healthier. So I thought, I wonder if that's it. And I didn't remember until later in the night before I almost went to bed about, you know, I wonder if that spot is a spot that actually would alleviate some of the pain I was having and I looked it up online and wouldn't you know that that one spot is actually a spot that alleviates uh, the pain that my body was having um, and after I applied pressure there for a little bit I kind of dozed for a bit I woke up I was able to go about my day um, now granted and I'm going to be honest with a lot of people will think, oh, you go about your day, you weren't in any pain. I, I was in pain on and off through the day. It came and went, um, but not as bad as it could have been. And I think that one of the reasons that happened is because I was trusting God completely for my health. And I was asking him to help me. And because I've, kind of, I, I, I've been really working at it and I've gotten to a point where God can work in my life, he allowed me to be able to, to do that just naturally. And I was just so amazed by it that I didn't actually have any words for it. And it may sound crazy to you, but I think the only person who gets the glory for that is God because there's no other explanation for it. Because until that night when I looked it up, I had no clue that that was actually a spot that would have helped the pain I was experiencing. So from all of that, you know, I think that the, the whole thing that I'm trying to bring forward in this um, video is don't limit God in your life. And the big way to not limit him is to pray. Pray in faith that he's going to provide, that he's going to move those mountains in your life. The Bible says if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And that may not mean figuratively. I have hills and mountains and where I live. And that doesn't and that might not mean that if I pray that God moves the mountain that he's just going to move it to the sea, you know, and be cast into the sea. But I think that it means that even in your life, you know, we've faced so many big mountains in our life in terms of just daily things that happen. I mean, sometimes you feel like you're in a rut for so long, you don't know if there's going to be any light of day again. You don't know if you're going to feel like you can smile ever again, if you can laugh, if you can, you know, face the world. But with God, you can move those mountains of depression, anxiety, financial stresses, of physical challenges, of family circumstances and relationship situations. So don't limit God have faith, believe that he can do it. And one of those ways you can do that is by diligently seeking him every day in your life to work and ask him to work and ask him to show you. It may not happen right away, but God wants to see you being faithful on a daily basis. And that's the way that he can work and not be limited in what he's going to do for you in your life. So um, with that, I'm going to let you go. I pray that you have a blessed day. Don't forget to check out A Song of Deliverance on Facebook, on YouTube, and at my blog. Um, make sure you check out some of the music. I'm working on some more stuff right now to see, you know, hopefully it can come out in the next couple of months. Um, but keep staying faithful. Uh, keep on uh, being encouraged. And I pray that your day is blessed with uh, many great things that God has for you. God bless.